Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to join the good senator from North Carolina, as well as my colleagues, in uh, bringing Senate attention to the President's fiscal year 2024 budget. At the outset, I want to say I support a balanced budget amendment and uh, have done so since I first came uh, to the Senate and think that's something that we need to pass. We need a balanced budget amendment. Uh, but with that, I, I do want to comment on the Biden administration's budget uh, released last week, uh, which uh, goes in the wrong direction. President Biden's $6.9 trillion proposal is full of the same tax and spend policies that do not balance the budget, do not help reduce inflation. And instead, they levy taxes on hardworking Americans and spend money that we don't have. In total, the budget proposes $4.7 trillion. Let me repeat that, $4.7 trillion in new taxes on the American people. We need to get our fiscal house in order and we do that by controlling spending, not again raising taxes on hardworking Americans. It's time that we come together to reduce our debt and deficit and enact responsible policies that will reduce inflation and lift the burden uh, that our American taxpayers currently face. The President's budget calls for increasing the corporate tax rate to 28 percent. This is higher than the average corporate tax rate in Europe which is currently 21.7 percent, and it's even higher than the tax rate in China, if you can believe that, which is 25 percent. This policy neglects the fact that tax increases like these are ultimately passed through to consumers in terms of higher prices for goods and services. That's just the reality. We know this um, because in 2021, the nonpartisan Joint Committee on Taxation scored a similar corporate tax increase proposal and uh, very cl clearly came back and demonstrated that that uh, tax increase would be borne by hardworking taxpayers, and certainly taxpayers making less than the $400,000 per year that uh, Senator Biden, Governor, excuse me, President Biden has talked about. Because of this administration's past tax and spend policies, just yesterday the up updated CPI, Consumer Price Index, indicated that prices for goods and services in this country continues to rise. We've seen uh, historic levels of inflation. And a big part of controlling and reducing that inflation is controlling and reducing overall spending. With the latest numbers, unless you've gotten at least a 15 percent raise since the Biden administration took office, you've effectively suffered a pay cut because the rate of inflation has gone up faster than your rate of pay. During the previous administration, we took a different approach, cutting the top corporate tax rate from 35 percent to 21 percent. This approach led to economic growth and businesses coming back to America. And it also led to higher wages for American workers. Of particular concern in my state of North Dakota are the proposed tax increases on energy production, including oil, gas, and coal. In fact, the Biden budget intends to, or tries, or proposes to increase taxes by $31 billion on fossil fuel companies. But the budget fails to recognize that these taxes are borne by consumers and higher prices at the pump. When they pull up to the gas station, higher prices at the pump, higher electric bills, and higher costs when they go to the grocery stores. That's where, that's where they're ultimately paid. We need to produce more energy. We need to create incentives to produce more energy in this country to bring down the cost of energy. There's an energy component in almost every product that you can think of. And we need to find ways to produce more energy to help increase supply and reduce the cost of energy. That will help with inflation across the board. Furthermore, taxes like these only help oil producing countries like Russia, Iran, and Venezuela. Countries that have far inferior environmental standards to those here in the United States. That makes no sense. No sense at all. My colleagues and I have worked with the last administration to put in place policies that made our country not only energy independent, but energy dominant. Energy dominant. More energy, more supply helped reduce the cost of energy. That benefited consumers 
in their pocketbook. It also created more jobs and, and increased the wages and the jobs. We have that benefited the American worker. And energy security is also a national security issue, making us less dependent on our adversaries and helping our allies, helping our allies so that they don't have to depend on energy from our adversaries. Look at what's going on in Europe right now with our support and Western Europe's support for Ukraine at the same time that Europe is looking to get energy from Russia, a country which has invaded Ukraine. Again, yeah, that makes no sense. We need to return to policies that incentivize energy production in this country, not tax the very energy producers that produce more energy in this country with better environmental stewardship than anywhere else in the world. Also on defense, the budget falls short on defense. Well, on paper, the budget proposes to increase defense spending in 2024. It fails to take into account uh, the incredible inflation cost, which has been generated by this administration's tax and spend policies. Our current threat, obviously, uh, not only with what we see in Europe, but globally, we can only respond to with a position of strength. Strength. This budget would, resu would result in just the opposite. Smaller army, fewer Navy ships, fewer Air Force aircraft. We need to support our men and women in uniform by providing them with the resources they need. They need to address the global threats posed by our adversaries. In conclusion, the President's budget is the wrong proposal at the wrong time. Congress must work to find savings, reduce our debt and deficit, and responsibly fund our priorities without increasing taxes on hardworking American taxpayers. As a, Senate, as a member of the Senate Appropriations Committee and the ranking member of the Ag Appropriations Committee, I look forward to working on the fiscal year 2024 appropriations bills and enacting common sense legislation that meets our country's needs while facing our fiscal realities and working to get our debt and deficit under control. With that, Mr. President, I yield the floor.